Ah, GTA 4. A place where taxis drive better than you, where pigeons mock my shooting skills, and where Roman's phone calls are the real crime, which is why I keep coming back. Anyway, hey, I am Danny, and welcome to another video. Of course, by the title of this video, I am milking the iceberg chart videos, because it is utterly fun, because it is nice. However, instead of just covering one iceberg, I will be covering multiple GTA 4 icebergs in one video, as well as putting my own stuff in. Anyway, I will leave all credits in the description of all the redditors that made the charts, and I will be posting this iceberg as an injured link for you all to copy and steal. Actually, don't copy, because plagiarism is bad. Also, let me know any other things I should add in the iceberg since I will be splitting this into multiple parts. And whilst you are down there, commenting to kill myself, please like and subscribe. I am closing in on 100 subscribers. Anyway, enough of the shit I just said, let's get right into it. Hillary Clinton Hillary Clinton was a former United States Secretary of State and a candidate for the 2016 national election. Before this, however, she was the Senator of New York and also a hater of video games, especially the GTA series. This brings us to the hot coffee controversy. I will not talk too much about it, but this got Rockstar in a lot of trouble, and Hillary Clinton was part of it. This nearly made GTA San Andreas rated with the sales killing AO rating, even though the hot coffee mod was a mod. As revenge, Rockstar Games, for their next game, added Hillary Clinton as an I hate that fucking name. Added her as an easter egg to GTA 4 in the form of a Statue of Liberty, or as in the game, the Statue of Happiness. There we see Hillary Clinton's face on the statue, smiling. On her left hand, she's holding a tablet, but on the right hand, instead of her torch, she's holding a coffee cup. The Heart of Liberty. For this, a helicopter is needed. If we were to land onto this part of the Statue of Hillary, we can see a door, which we can phase through. Uh, before we go in, there is also a sign that says no hidden content this way, so I believed it and deleted the game. Anyway, inside the door, there is a ladder leading up into the statue. And if we were to climb it, we would eventually see a beating heart chained to the wall of the statue. Shooting it or exploding it causes blood to come out, but it is indestructible. Apparently, Louise can spawn here after getting drunk, but other than that, there is nothing interesting about this heart. Actually, in the GTA Myths fandom, I spotted a comment made by the user YouTuberFan0453 that amused me. He says the reason why there is a heart inside the statue is because, quote, It's a reference of Hillary Clinton being heartless and showing no mercy to the whole GTA franchise. There is one thing I will touch this on later in the last tier, which includes a theory about the game. Cracked Drunk Camera Many games, including Grand Theft Auto 4, had anti-piracy measures in case someone tries to crack it for free. One of the measures which made the people quit instantly is the drunk camera effect, where the camera constantly shook and was vomit inducing to look at for 5 milliseconds. Mm. Many people were fucking confused when they saw this after the loading into the hellscape, and it's quite funny to read old forum posts from yesteryear where people were going crazy over it. There were also many other measures against piracy, like softlocks, cannot reverse, and auto acceleration. Also, many people who did legit pay for the game had their experience ruined due to things such as antiviruses interfering with the game, making the functionality of antiviruses completely the opposite. <coughs> Jack Thompson Jack Bruce Thompson is an American lawyer and activist, and shares a common habit with Hillary Clinton, loving to hate video games. I am not going to talk about the entire history of Thompson and GTA because it really gets to terrible things which I will not get to. So we'll just quickly sprint forward to 2007. I'll just give the highlights of the controversy with GTA 4. Take Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar, filed a lawsuit to Thompson to prevent Thompson from preventing the selling of GTA 4 and Manhunt 2 to minors. Thompson's response was, quote, I have been praying. That Take Two and its lawyers would do something so stupid, so arrogant, so dumb, even dumber than what they have done to, to date, that such a misstep would enable me to destroy Take Two. Once 2008 comes and GTA 4 is released, Thompson called the game Gravest assault upon children in this country since polio. He also wrote, get this, wrote to the mother of Strauss Zelnick, the CEO of Take Two, a letter saying that her son was 
doing everything he possibly can to sell as many copies of Grand Theft Auto 4 to teen boys in the United States. Jack became an easter egg in GTA 4. The game has a mission called Final Interview, where Nico Bellic has to go to the law firm called Goldberg, Lingner and Scheister to kill a lawyer by the name of Tom Goldberg. Jack saw this as an attack on him, so he did the reasonable thing of threatening to ban GTA 4 from the market. Nowadays, Jack was disbarred from the law in 2022, so expect GTA 6 not to be attacked by him. Johnny is dead. I think it's talking about when Johnny Klebitz died in GTA 5 by Trevor, so yeah. Bowling is one of the locations where you can hang out with friends and complete fun activities. The activity itself is not interesting, but that did not stop the game turning it into a meme. You see, Roman has a saying. Roman. This, in combination with the annoying constant phone calls, caused the GTA community to meme the minigame. Hell, Flying Kitty made a video which clearly is the predecessor of Bloody Skibidi Toilet. Small Canon Decisions In the game, there are decisions you can make that can influence the world in small ways. A bit like actual RPGs. All of them, except for the deal endings, do not influence the story in big ways, but are still pretty cool. One character in the beginning of the game you get introduced to is Ivan Mdichkov, an ex-worker of Vlad. In the mission, Ivan the not so terrible. Once we've chased him to the end of a rooftop, we are given a choice either to save or kill him. If you choose to save him, later after you have unlocked the final island, you get to meet him again, and he gives you a mission for us. Another one is the decision to kill Playboy X or Dwayne Forge. Where killing Playboy will give us his safe house, and killing Dwayne gives us a ton of money. Nico's gloves. In the cover art of the game, we can see Nico wearing black gloves on his hands, but in the game we never see them. Actually, you can re-enable them in the game's files by using the software OpenIV. I'll link a tutorial in the description. Euphoria is a game animation middleware used for physics engine in many games, made by Natural Motion. Rockstar Games announced in February 2007 that future games from them will use the middleware in their new software called Rage, the Rockstar Advanced Game Engine. GTA 4 was the first game to use the Euphoria physics engine, along with Red Dead 1, GTA 5 and more. What is interesting about GTA 4's engine is how great the physics were compared to previous GTA games, and uncontroversially better than GTA 5's. I've seen a few comparisons of how strong GTA 4's is compared to GTA 5, like how driving in the two games are different, GTA 4 having more realistic driving in heavy vehicles, and GTA 5 having easy, arcade-like driving. Another one is car crashes. GTA 4's characters go flying, whilst GTA 5's sometimes just die on impact. Arab Money is a song that the character Yusuf Amir loves to sing. It was composed by the rapper Basta Rhymes and Ron Browse. Beta Nico, Johnny and Luis. In a GTA trailer 1 named Things Will Be Different, we get to see the protagonist of the main game, Nico Bellic. However, he looks different to how he appears in the final game. His face shape was rounder, his nose bigger, and his hairline ugly. <laughs> we also get to see Johnny and Luis in their exquisite beta forms. Johnny arguably looks better, with the light grey jacket and cooler facial hair, and Louise... Uh... Vladimir Lvovich Mashkov is a Russian actor casted in many movies, including the 2001 film Behind Enemy Lines, and Nico Bellic was based on Vladimir himself. In fact, he was meant to voice Nico, but he turned on the involvement with the game. That, however, did not stop the appearance of Nico looking like Mashkov and you can clearly see the similarities between the two. Channel 1 of Russia made an interview with Vlad in 2010, and he was asked about voicing the video game character. The interviewer thought and said that the reason he declined the game was because This is not my level. But then Mashkov retorted with God, really? Do I really act like that? No. He said he was happy that the game had made half a billion dollars. He said that the reason he declined was because, quote, I did not take it seriously. The Swing of Death is a glitch I have covered before on this channel. Basically it is a glitch where if you were to merely touch a swing in the game, you would get launched into your death, but here are some cool clips.
beta map. Like with all games, the open world has gone through changes throughout development. And in this game, we can see remnants of that. The texture of the telephone directory has a map of Liberty City, but different. The airport had more runways, Middle Park seemed to have no lakes, and Alderney had a large peninsula sticking out, which seemed to have no roads. Other changes were made too, and apparently, there was an area in the game meant to represent the inhabitants of New York State, called the Caraways. Anyway, this was the largest video project I have worked on this year. It would be appreciated if you subscribe. I am so close to 100 subs, and your subscribing means the world to me. Comment other things I should add, and I will respond to any questions you might as well have. Till the next video, see ya!